He was brainwashed. That's how friends and family members are explaining Johar Sarnaev's alleged involvement in the Boston Marathon bombings. Brainwashed by his older brother, who was brainwashed by a radical Muslim. But is there really such a thing as brainwashing? Defined by Webster's as forcible indoctrination, the term isn't recognized by the American Psychological Association, but some experts say it's real. Stephen Hassan, author and counselor who says he's a former cult member himself, tells me based on what he has read in the news, Zokar was under the mind-controlling influence of his brother. People can be made to do heinous acts under mind control, he says, acts that they would never in a million years consider. Where does the term brainwashing come from? The Cold War. The word was first popularized in the 1953 book Brainwashing in Red China about the thought control techniques used by the communist state. The notion was amplified by the 1959 novel The Manchurian Candidate, which later became a movie starring Frank Sinatra and Angela Lansbury about a former Korean War POW brainwashed by communists into becoming a political assassin. The word brainwashing helped undo the presidential candidacy of Mitt Romney's father, George Romney, who in 1967 said his early support for the Vietnam War had been due to brainwashing by U.S. military and diplomatic officials in Vietnam. The term has been used more recently in the context of radical Islam. The father of Richard Shubhama Reed said his son was brainwashed. A friend of John Walker, the so-called American Taliban, told People Magazine he'd been brainwashed by Al-Qaeda. But is there a brainwashing defense? Defense lawyers tried using it in a 1990 mail fraud case, claiming the defendant had been brainwashed by Scientologists. The judge threw out the argument for not being grounded in established science. There's also the famous case of newspaper heiress Patty Hearst. After being kidnapped by the Symbionese Liberation Army, she took part in an armed bank robbery. Her defense claimed she was brainwashed, but jurors found her guilty and sentenced Hearst to 35 years in prison. In the court of public opinion, she fared better, many considering her the victim of Stockholm Syndrome. President Jimmy Carter later commuted her sentence and President Bill Clinton granted her a full pardon. Could Sarnayev use mind control in his defense? Thomas Durkin, who's defended several Guantanamo Bay detainees, says brainwashing is a layman's term for coercion or duress. And while he believes that argument wouldn't help Sarnayev's defense, it could affect his sentence if he's found guilty. Other attorneys agree, call it what you will, brainwashing, mind control, duress. It could become a factor, they say, when you're talking about a death penalty case. That's the short answer.